Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop that's not the shop. In this case, we're in the house. But recently I posted on Facebook a question, I presented a question about how you would transfer in a regular shape such as this thing to carve co so that you could determine the outline so that you could lay your object within this shape and not go outside of it. If you wanted to do an inlay or make a clock or whatever on a board like this. Now if you'll notice, this is a live edge board here and it's got a saw cut here. So the shape that I'm trying to duplicate is along this edge. Only the flat is what I'm trying to duplicate. So if you want to know how to do that, this is going to be one of my shorter videos, but if you want to know how to do that, stick with me and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is create grid lines. And this is an old school art trick that I learned back in high school in my art classes to change, or not to change, to duplicate an object or a drawing. And very basic, but what we're gonna do is use a little old school and we're gonna take it into the modern school with Carveco. Start with a flat surface across the bottom or any straight edge that you can find and create a working grid going across it. And in this case, this piece of black walnut, I started on the bottom because I have a flat piece here and actually it was an almost 90 degrees here. Created a one inch grid from the bottom so there's a line every one inch going up through and you can make that tighter if you'd like but in this case one inch was plenty. So one inch all the way to the top, divide the bottom in half and draw a vertical line. Now it's an eyeball, it doesn't have to be perfect but I went from the center of the point to what I perceived to be the center of the bottom down here. Drew a straight line across that. The reason for the tape is because I didn't want to take the Sharpie marker to the board if I'm going to carve on it. Also, it makes it easier for you all to see this in the video. After you have the lines drawn on your board, you measure from the center line out to the edge to the exact point where your grid line and the center line gives you a measurement. You write that measurement down and you continue to do that all the way up the board. Then you go to the other side and you do the same thing, measuring from the center to the point that you are copying the edge and you just continue to write all of those down and then you take this piece of wood and you lean it up against your television like this. Not really. Just put it somewhere so you can see the numbers. And then you jump on Carveco and that's what we'll do next to show you how you put all this in and how you make that work so that this translates to that. Let's get on the computer. Okay, we're gonna begin with a new model, obviously. And you're gonna to wanna to measure across the base of your object to make this simple. Now there's a way you can do this where you oversize your work surface and then you would move your origin to the very edge of your project. We're not gonna show you that here. I just wanna show you how to do this grid to keep it simple. So I know that across the bottom of that odd shaped board is 10 and a quarter inches wide, so we're going to go 10 and a quarter by 20 tall. We're going to go excessively high so that we have enough room to create the grid and etc. Click OK. Go to the 2D view over here. And we're going to use grid lines to do this, obviously, because we placed a grid on the board. So how do we go about that? I've said this before. I'll say it again. We go up here in the top by the numbers or over here in the numbers. Left click and drag to bring in a grid line. Now before we continue, I do want to remind you all that this is the way that I do these things. As I say in every video, there's a hundred different ways to do this and none of them are wrong and none of them are right. Whatever works for you is the way to do this and this is how I do these. So we're going to begin by going into the top left clicking and dragging a grid line down doesn't matter where you drop it just let go and drop it double arrows when you hover over it right click gives you this we're going to edit the guideline all right now i want that line that grid line right on the very bottom so the way we do this is we enter zero here in the position and we click apply and it pops it down on the bottom now, we have, in my case, 18 lines, 18 horizontal lines going vertically up the board. So we need 18 
guidelines or grid lines, however you want to call them, guidelines. We need 18 of those going up the work area. How do we do that? That is simple. We know that we spaced them at one inch, so from zero, we're going to go up one inch here where it says position. We're going to put one in there. We're going to do a relative offset checkbox. And as I said, I want 18, so we change the one here in the count number to 18, and we click insert. When I do that, magic happens. There you go, 18 of those lines that you put on your board. Close this out. We don't need this any longer. Now we do need a center line. As we said, we're going to work from left and right, so we need to go into the center. Come over here on the left and drag in. Now the board is 10 and a quarter inches wide, so that is 5 and an eighth to center. We get our double arrows, right click, edit guideline. Now up here we're going to put in 5.125. Let me make sure I'm correct. Yes, 5.125 for five and eighth, which would be one half of each side. Click apply. And now we are dead center. Now we do need to continue to use this menu here, so don't close it out. We're gonna do relative offsets relative to the center line. Everything on the left side will be a negative. Everything on the right side will be a positive. So let's begin with the left side. To do this, relative offset again, and as I said, everything will be a negative. So you're going to put a negative number here for the left. So negative. And then we look at our board as a reference. And we know the first line was 5 and 8 inches from center to the edge. We go until we come to the line that is different than that. And we enter that number in, which was 4 and 7 eighths. So here we'll put in 4.875. Click insert. And it puts a line in. Now you don't have to concern yourself with these vertical lines yet. All we're doing is ensuring or making sure that we enter every dimension that we have put on that board from bottom to top, every different dimension. So we had four and seven eighths. The next one is four and five eighths. So we'll backspace 4.625, click insert. And we're gonna continue all the way across this board on the left hand side. The next one was four and three eighths. That's 4.375. We're going to insert that. And you're going to continue all the way up the board on every one of your measurements, not paying any attention to where these are dropped in. Don't concern yourself about how messy this is getting on each side. Once you've done the left, you'll go over to the right and you'll begin again on the bottom. And in this case, let's pretend these are all in here. We're going to start working on the right. These will be a positive figure. So in this case, we know that because it was in the center, it was five and an eighth across. The next measurement was four and seven eighths. So we're going to put in 4.875 in insert. Now, some of these numbers on the left are going to match the numbers on the right. That doesn't matter. What matters is eventually there's going to be a dimension that comes in or goes out and it's going to change. But let's get all of these numbers in here first. We stopped at, or we started at four and seven eighths. The next one was four and three quarters. So that'll be 4.75 and click insert. Remembering each time you enter a number into the position line, you have to insert it or it will not be there. The next line up was four and a half so we all know that's 4.5 click insert and i'm going to fast forward through putting the rest of these numbers in numbers <laughs> i'm going to fast forward putting in the rest of these guidelines so that we can jump ahead to show you what the next step is Now that we have all of the grid lines in, we don't need this edit guideline menu any longer. We get rid of that. And what we're going to do is there's going to be a lot of zooming in and zooming out here so that we can achieve what we need to do. So let's zoom out a little bit and we'll zoom in towards the bottom. You're going to start on the very left side. If you're working on the left, if you're working on the right, you'll start on the very right side. But we're going to start right here on the very left corner. We're going to click the line tool. You're going to left click on that corner 
and then you're going to drag over one and up to the next crosshair. Now when the cursor turns to a crosshair, you're on the four corners of that guideline. Click left click, over one, up to the next, left click, over one, up to the next, left click. Again, we have to zoom out and zoom in so that we can see we want to be very precise. Again, over one, up one and click, so on and so forth, all the way up and over the top. Let me high speed that for you. Okay, now when you get to the top, you're going to work your way back down going the opposite way. You're going to go down one and over one, down one, over one and continue all the way to the bottom corner. Now when you get here, you see that we've run out. Well, that's because the last three or four dimensions were straight. As you can recall in the beginning, there was a straight wall on the side of the project. So in this case, we don't need to hit each one of these. We can go all the way to the bottom, click on the bottom crosshair, now that's not where we're going to stop. We want to come all the way across back to the starting point. And when we get the window cross here, we click again. And as you can see now, it has completed, oops, closed these vectors for us. Let's make it easier to see. If we go up here to the top and click the cursor tool, click view and delete all guidelines. Let's click off it so you can see. Now, as you can see, we have a perfect match, well, or as close as you can get to the board that I showed you in the beginning. Now, one thing I will recommend is lighting that thing up and right-clicking and creating a copy and clicking again and pasting it, clicking in and grabbing one of the copies and moving it off so that if you happen to delete this, you can start over again, and you don't have to do the whole grid thing. You can just move this out of the way, and then pick your image that you decide to put in here. Let's say you were going to put an eagle or something in here, and you wanted to size it so that it wasn't too big for your stock. That is what this outline does for you. It allows you to put it in there so that when you put it on the machine, it doesn't put your eagle over here off of, off of your pointy object. Now, like I said, if you had oversized your stock considerably and you put this thing in the middle such as I did with this one here if you put it on a piece of stock that's too large or oversized you can move the origin to the edge of the stock or to that edge right there of your project the way you would do that I said I wasn't going to show you but I'll do that quickly you would go to model you would go set position and then you would choose the position with the cursor and you would put the cursor right dead on the corner and click OK. And it will move your origin to right there so that you can use the corner of your actual stock as your origin when you go to carve. All right, there you have it. How to use an old school trick in a new modern software. Remember to keep your thinking cap on when you're doing these things. It makes it much easier. I hope you got something out of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. As always, give us a like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll catch you on the next one.